what we did was we actually find out what is del p del q del q del q del p del q and del q del p okay and then put them together and then do this person's bracket equation and finally we saw that the answer was equal to one once it's one we know that the transformation was canonical for the second question, what we did was we actually tried to find out the value of M and N. And the given condition was that this transformation was already canonical, right? So what we did was we actually just took up uh, the QP is equal to one uh, condition for canonical transformation, this condition. And then we put everything together, did some normal differentiation. And then we finally arrived at a very simple expression where we can simply say that M and Q to the power 2M minus 1 is equal to 1. Now, you know, uh, this kind of equation, we can always equate the powers and definitely we can say what are the values of M and N from this expression. So then finally we have written down the transformation equation. The next part of the question was actually to find out the generating function. Okay? So, you know, if we remember generating function from the first part of this unit, we said that there are basically four forms of the generating function. Okay, so what do you have is small Q capital Q, small Q capital P. Okay and then uh, uh, small p capital p and then small p capital q right so those are the four forms that we had and if you remember we actually wrote down these forms okay so to be very frank even i sometimes gets confused so it's very important that you just have a look at them every day okay so that you easily remember them so you see these are some forms which are written so you can have always one set of transformation on one side and on the other side it will be the generalized corresponding generalized coordinate in the uh, old set of coordinates. So this is your old set of coordinates. Right? So if we just look into this particular equation here, we have got this Q and this is small Q, Q to the power half and cos of 2P. So basically what we have here is a capital P, a small Q, a small P, right? And if we just square both sides, we can just simply write it down in this equation. Q square is equal to capital Q square into sec square 2P. What happens is if you take any other form also, you are going to more or less get the same form of the generating function. Okay? So you can try out different ways, but then what you can do is we can simply say that this Q is minus del F3 del P. Okay, So, uh, you know, this, if we write it down, this is in terms of cap small P and capital Q, we are talking about the third form of the generating function. Okay. So if you go to the third form of the generating function that we have seen in the uh, first part of this unit, okay, we just see this, this is equal to Q, okay, and then this is nothing but minus of del F3 del P, okay. So what we did was this, okay, so this is the third form that we have considered. So whenever you are going to do in, in, it in your exam, okay, be the question on uh, canonical transformation, be the Poisson's bracket or be the exact differential, it's always preferable that you write it on the side of your answer script or the, all the four generating functions. Once you write down all the four forms, the picture is clear in front of you and then you can easily guess that which form should I use, okay? So the A uh, in this particular question is to find out what is F3, that is the A. So you know, you can see here that here we can actually do some integration, okay, and differentiation, and then we can find out what is the form of F3. You already know what is Q, so you can just put the value of Q, okay? And, uh, mm, what we do is this, so I think it's simple. We just replace this small q by this and minus del F3 del P, and then we can just take del F3 is equal to minus q square uh, sec square 2P del P. Okay, so that's there. And uh, then we have got this F3 is equal to minus, and then what the aim is to find out what is F3, not del of F3. So what you can do is you can just integrate on this side, you can integrate on this side, just take out the minus sign and just do your calculations, okay? So, you know, uh, when you are integrating with respect to this, okay, you can always uh, consider this to be a constant, okay? You can just take it out, okay? And then you can do your integration part, okay? So please make sure, okay, I think this is small p, yeah? so just, just make sure that all these terms are put correctly, okay, this is important. So once you do this and sec square 2p, you know, you can just do this uh, replacement method. You can replace 2p by x and then do your integration. And finally, you get this. So this is your generating function. Okay, so that's important. I just included the integration part, but you can always do it on your own. I don't think it's important. You know it, okay? So basically, when you're uh, uh, integrating sec squared to x dx, you can just put this 2x as z. There it was 2p. So you can just take d dx of 2x, so that is dz dx, right? So 2x dx is equal to dz. So your uh, differential uh, or your variable would be dx, it will be half of dz. 
So you can just replace it this six square z dz by two, right? And then you can just integrate six square z dz, and that's a standard integral. That's ten z. So most of the times, be it for your exam or be it uh, in uh, entrance exam and all, okay. Most of the times, these uh, forms or the integration that you need to really perform will be more or less standard. It's not that you are going to get something which is a, a complicated integration, okay. So that's why it is very tactfully put as x square z. So they can either straight away do the calculations, okay. So it usually is done until unless the question paper becomes a bit hard. Usually that's the standard. So what I would suggest all of you that please don't do away with your um, differentiation and integration table. Please be in touch with that, okay. So this is one more problem that I've taken up for this class, uh, which is the Poisson's bracket, okay. And uh, here the question is uh, much more simpler than the previous one. You have to just been given Q and you have been given P, okay? And you have to prove that this is canonical, right? So straight away you can write down Q P is equal to zero, or you can just straight away start doing your uh, differentiation and later on you put it there. Okay? So you can just straight away write it down this. If you put it at the beginning, that means the picture is clear to you, okay? You can always aim for the final answer. That will be more easy. This is capital Q. Okay. So I put this and then what I need to do is I need to find out all the probable variations. So I'll find out del Q del Q. So I can find out del Q del Q. So just find out del del Q of this. Okay. So see, these are all integration and differentiation. I don't really need to explain this. But then as I tell you every time that it's not how fast I'm going. It's how much practice you are having with these kind of sums. So you have to just practice it, okay, to get more confidence in solving these kind of problems, okay. So you see, this this is del del q of this. So you have just got q here, okay. So I can just replace this entire term with a term, let's say x. So it will be n to the power n minus one. So this will be half n x to the power n minus one, right? And then you differentiate this separately. When you separately differentiate, you get e to the power minus two q. Then you differentiate minus two q, you get minus two. So that's how you get it right. So this is basically the equation that you're getting. Please make very sure that you are clear with the signs plus minus and so on, because that exactly what uh, will define your final answer. Okay. Most of the times they do ask you that, well, show that it's canonical, or if you get a multiple choice question, is this equation canonical? Okay. And many a times it's canonical, but sometimes it's not even canonical. Okay. So sometimes if you don't get the answer as one. That means it might not be canonical. Okay, so you have to be very sure that you are doing it correctly. It's very important. So just uh, going ahead, we can just take del p and del p. It is del del p of uh, uh, capital P. That's cos inverse of p e to the power q. Okay, then again the same integration part, and then you can just uh, finally arrive at this result. Okay, so please make sure you do it. Okay, see now you even know, need to know the integration of inverse function. So being an MS student, being a master student. Uh, it's expected that you know the differential of the inverse functions also. Okay, so please make sure you read the inverse function table and the um, differentiation of uh, the normal cos theta sine theta function and all the standard uh, differential uh, values that you know. Okay, and even integration part is important. Del Q del P, then then del P of Q. You can just put it there. You can get this equation. Okay, just practice it once. Okay, and then del P del Q. You can put this, get this, and this. So if this recording, even if I'm not putting it there, and if you have the question, you should be able to do it. Okay, it's not important to show you these steps. What happens at the end result is when you put everything in its place. Okay, uh, this and this you basically just uh, get the same thing on both sides, but then there is the minus here. Okay, then minus minus becomes plus. Okay. And then you have this, okay. You see, then then this is e to the power minus two q. It is p square, okay. And if you just uh, simplify this, okay. If you just simplify this, you are going to get the final answer as one, okay. And just take the LCM and do the simplification. You should be getting it to be one, okay. So that's important, and that is uh, exactly what is needed in these kind of questions, okay. So you know, if q q is zero, that is one part of the uh, and then, uh, 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 sorry, a uh, transformation being canonical. PP is zero. That is also there. If QQ is zero, PP will be zero. Okay, that is obvious. But then, if QP is one, then only we can say that the transformation is canonical. Okay, that's important. So uh, these kind of questions will come. Okay, it's not that I give you the exact question. Okay, if you are on your mobile or your uh, laptop, you can always take a screenshot of this question. Okay. Just take down the form of, or you can even write it down. Just take down the form of Q, 
is take down the form of P and do your calculation and check whether the transformation is canonical or not. Okay, using Poisson's bracket. So you know, question it will be clearly mentioned Poisson's bracket or exact differential. If nothing is mentioned, you can do the way you like. And I would suggest you can take a Poisson bracket rather than the exact differential method. Okay, quite straightforward. So you can always do that. Okay, so it's totally up to you. If mentioned, you do it else. You can just take a Poisson bracket. That will be more easy. Okay. So just to end this, I will just take a very general example of angular momentum and Poisson's bracket. Okay. So before we really go into the angular momentum, I think this one I have mentioned time and again. You've read in class 11 about rotational dynamics. That whenever we have a linear component, we do have a rotational component corresponding to that linear component as well. So if you have something like linear momentum, which you call as that mass into velocity, the angular momentum will be related with uh, the linear momentum, provided we know what is the point at which it is rotating from the axis of rotation, right? So uh, in general, when we write down the angular momentum, it will be L is equal to R cross P. Now what happens is in uh, lower classes, okay, even in school, okay, in general, not under graduation. Under graduation, you usually consider the vector form. You usually just take it to be one dimension. We can just take it to be X or Y and so on. But then when we look into the real picture, we have to consider all the dimensions. So we're just considering R to be IX cap, YJ cap, and ZK cap, right? And then when we consider the momentum, we have to consider it in all the three, uh, all three uh, representations, okay, along the X, Y, and Z, okay? So all the different uh, mm, momentums are considered here, okay? I, J, and K, okay? So we basically call them as the component, okay? So X component, Y component, Z component. But then uh, since we are writing it down in terms of X, Y, and Z, this side also L would be nothing but I, L, X, J, L, Y, K, L, Z. So this position and this momentum will be connected with the X component of the linear momentum as well, right? So when you just do the cross product, I think all of us are very sure about this. Okay, I, J, K. You take I cross I, that will be zero, right? Okay, but then if you take I cross J, it will be K cap. You take J cross K, it will be I cap, and then so on, right? So this is the clockwise, okay? Vector product, all of us know it. So you can just do it this way, or you can just take a, a matrix form, right? You can just write down the determinant of that, and then you can actually find it out, right? So I, J, J. You can do it any way you like, okay? You can do it directly also. I will know that you already know it, okay? So anyway, you can just take it there. So you can see I cross I will become zero, so it doesn't have a component. Then it becomes I cross J, okay? So it is I cross J, okay? So I cross J is K. So I'll get the K component here, right? And this would be nothing but X and PY. So X and PY, right? And then I can go again with I cross K. So I cross K, would be nothing but in the opposite direction. So there is a minus J there. So, so sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, so I cross K, okay? So it will be J, so it will write here, J. That's in the opposite direction. So this is X and this is PZ, okay? So this will be uh, X and PZ and then there is a minus Z. So in this way, you can actually do your uh, uh, cross product, okay? You can consider I, J, K, keep some space, do it one by one, you can always do it, okay? Or if you just want the K component, you can simply talk about this. I cross J will give you the K component, and then this J cross I will again give you the K component. Then you can get the K component together. You want to start with the I component, you can always start with uh, the other two, right? So you can start with J and G, uh, K. You can always do with this J and K, and then you can do with K and J. So that way you can get the uh, I component first. So it depends on you how you do it, okay? Everyone has their own way of doing it. So practice and do it. I've just written this directly, okay? So, you know, if you compare both sides, you know what is the X component of the linear momentum, Y component of the linear momentum, and Z component of the linear momentum in terms of X, Y, Z, PX, PY, and PZ, okay? So once we have this, what we can do is we can actually find out the Poisson bracket. And uh, if we do it Poisson bracket, we are not really proving whether it's canonical or not, okay? So we are just talking about the Poisson bracket. So if you want to find out the Poisson bracket of LX and LY, what you can do is this, del LX, del X, okay? So you see this LX, LY, and LZ are in terms of X, Y, Z, PX, PY, PZ. So when you take the Poisson bracket, you have to just differentiate this with respect to the generalized coordinate, okay? And with the respect to the generalized momentum of this. 
well, that is Px. That is Px. So just differentiate it with respect to x, with respect to Px. Here also you do the same thing, okay? Px and x. You just reverse it, right? So that's how Poisson bracket works, okay? But then uh, there is a trick here. There is an important part here. Whatever Poisson bracket we are doing for till now is whatever is there, okay? The variable. So we are more or less considering it to be one dimensional because we're just considering one Q, one P, one capital Q, one capital P, right? But here it's not the case. We are considering it to be three dimensional. So whenever you take LX, LY, you have to consider the uh, X part, the Y part, and the Z part. You have to consider all the six coordinates there, okay? The X, Y, Z, P, X, P, Y, P, Z. So everything has to be considered because this is a three dimensional picture. So you can just take take up LX, LY, and then just do this, put this. You already know what is LX, you already know what is LY, you can already know what is LZ, okay? Just replace those values, and you will see that most of the paths will just become zero, okay? I just take this example, del ly, del x, okay? You know, y, l, y will be having x there, but l, x won't be having any x, okay? You see, x, l, x won't be having any x, because that's how the vector product works, right? So l, y will have an x, so l, y will have an x here. So del, del, x of this, so it will be minus of pz. So I've just put that minus of pz. So, this way, you can just uh, find out all the components. So how many are there? See, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So if you just write down all the six components there, okay? And basically, you have to do six into two, 12, 12 differentiations, right? You do it very easily. See, one, two, three, four, and then I've done in three rows, so that's 12. So then what I do, I just put the values, okay? And once I put the values, I get something like this. This part becomes zero, this part becomes zero, and the last part becomes minus pyx minus ypx. So I can just simply write it down, and there is a minus sign, sorry. So it will be xpy minus ypz, and that's nothing but lz. So you know, when you do your uh, atomic and molecular physics also, you know that the angular momentums are more or less connected with each other, okay? Now this can be actually proved in using this Poisson bracket also, okay? But then here we are not considering that picture. We're just simply considering this relation between LX, Y, and LZ. So if you take the Poisson bracket of the angular momentum LX and LY, you get LZ, okay? So why this is important? Because I have seen some entrance question where they do ask this, okay, directly, very direct, okay? So they might ask you LX, LX. What is the Poisson bracket of LX, LX? You can straight away write down it as zero, okay? Because you know everything is going to be there zero, okay? And do it also. Uh, but then if you consider LX, LY, you get LZ. So you see X, Y, Z. So LX, LY is LZ. What if it is reversed? What if it is LY, LX? Okay, you will basically go in the other direction now. You'll be going this way. So you basically get an answer with a minus sign. Okay, so you know the order is very important. The order is very important. So you can try doing it and do and uh, you can just add this also, L, LY, LZ, you can again try, you'll get the answer as LX. And you can also try doing LZ, LX, and the answer that you will get is LY, okay? So you can try out these uh, two different variations, okay? And then you'll get your final answer, okay? Okay, so this is where we end our uh, fourth unit.